Huss from Smithfield, New South Wales, and this is my 86 BL Commodore. The VL body is the only Commodore I really love. It's, I'm passionate about the VL, but I can't stand the way they drive. So I really wanted a VL that went hard, stopped well, and handled very, very good. The first car was a Mitsubishi Sigma, thought of hail damage. I am a panel beater, so I decided to buy one that I could fix up. Obviously, apprentice, no money. They resprayed it, made it look cool by chopping the springs. It's obviously what you do when you're a P-plater. It was a pretty cool first car, big system in it. And I ended up getting a Stanza, Nissan Stanza. That was a, wow. <laughs> that was wow, that car. I bought up a Z18 in it. I got told it was the quickest thing on the road. It was pretty quick till I blew the motor. I got a VL uh, Calais Turbo original, and it was just looked really terrible. It had an ugly body kit on it, <laughs> but it was a good car. I got it cheap, ended up putting an RB25 in it, putting a full uh, half a walkie kit on it. Then I got a VS5 liter. I thought, wow, you get V8 time. So I painted it stupid green colour, another stupid idea. I was doing it for the summer nights actually, but I didn't, never ended up going, but I painted it green anyway. You know, just a straight exhaust to make it loud and lowered it, same thing, super low, oxy, let the thing go down a bit. So then I thought, you know what? Everyone's put Gen 3s in them, so I go, oh, I can do that. So I just did it myself. Everyone freaked out, but I did it, and I made it into a six speed. It was like Frankenstein, that car. But that's what I do, I just do. Whatever people can't do, I do, because it's just the fun part about it. I decided my brother had this old rusty 33 sitting in the driveway and I, he was going to throw it out and I said I'll, I'll take it. I had this idea of making a Commodore that's all wheel drive. And I rang up a mate and I said I need to, I need to find a VL, a VL uh, complete car, just a real cheap one. So he gets my mate's got one, went there, had a look at it, I paid him 100 bucks for it. He went 500, ended up getting it for 150. It cost me more to tow it than what it did to cost me to buy it. I'll ask one of my mates if I can use his workshop, which was, you know, pretty good of him. So I took it up to his workshop. He gave me a section downstairs. So I got this VL, stripped it all down. It was actually not a really, it wasn't the best body, but it was usable. People came in and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm just gonna take this body off this floor and they were just going, you're crazy. And so now I had two pretty much shoe boxes sitting at my mate's work and he's like pulling his hair out. What are you gonna do with this? And people come in and say, what are you gonna do with this thing? I said, just watch, mate, you watch. When I finally got the, just the floor panel of the skyline, pushed it over the hoist, put the body on the VL on the hoist, and pushed the, the, the floor underneath, and lowered it, and then I had to raise it again, cut more out of it, lowered it. Like that process took about 20, 30 goes before I had it all cut right. Got it in there, looked good. No, no jigs, no this. I had measuring tape, plasma cutter, a grinder, and a welder. And a bit of angle to bend all the metal I had to bend. That's all I had. I had pretty much the conversion done in about four weeks. So that's the first stage. So then the next stage was to get the bodywork done, because obviously it's a VL, so it's gonna have rust in it. it. Took about three weeks to get the rust all done in it and the body as straight as I can, with the help of a couple of my mates that work there. And then it was time to put the body kit on it and all that kind of stuff. So all, all up, it took about three months to get in primer, to get it ready for paint. Got my little brother, my other brother to spray it. Yeah, when I finally started putting it together, I rang my brother, I said, the car's ready to come back to you guys put the motor in it, finally got it in there. We had a lot of stuff lying around because he builds skylines. That's pretty much what he builds. I pretty much saved two cars that would otherwise be chucked in the scrap metal by now. And um, with parts lying around pretty much and um, put them together. And got up to this stage where we're up to now. It originally comes out of RB30 NA. Well, obviously the NA is not powerful enough for what I wanted. So I decided to put the RB26 in it and then I wanted to steal the manual. The car was originally auto. You can make power to any motor. Depends how much money you want to spend. And we had the stuff lying around pretty much for the RB26. You know, my brother had stuff lying around everywhere. So that's pretty much why we went that way. We ended up getting a six speed get rag gearbox just to make it more reliable, more, you know, no dog box in it. So it actually drives nice. <laughs> But it is stroke 2.7, so it is actually bigger than a 2.6. Yeah, well I basically wanted the power in it to just to race anything on, at the creek and pretty much, um, you know, be, be a competitor. Pretty much I got sick of seeing Skylines winning all the races, so I thought just cheat a bit and make a veal that's really a Skyline win the races. The car's got obviously the six-speed gearbox from the GD, R34 GDR. It's pretty, got, pretty much got R34 running gear all the way through it, front and back discs. 
because the R34 has got a nice top end freeway sort of a cruising gear ratio that I like. Put a triple play clutch in it so it's still smooth on the drive but under power it's got, you know, it'll hold. Cluster is another thing I've modified. I've got the original cluster because I couldn't use the VL one because the wiring won't plug into the Skyline wiring. So I ended up um, just buying a Haltech dash cluster and made a little fancy, used the original VL one, just gutted it out. You got one of my friends, he does hydro dipping, the hydro dipper for me. I wanted to put the GDR seats in the front, which bolts straight into the floor pan anyway, which was good. So I got R32 GDR front seats and found a trimmer from home actually. This is green trim from the guy from home. Carpet was a big, big pain in the ass because you couldn't use VL and you couldn't use Skyline because obviously the VL is narrower than the Skyline and the shape's different. So we had to just lay carpet and he took the guy eight hours to lay the carpet in it and he was sweating and cursing me and he wanted to kill me. Well, the wheels are like MC Racing from Top Class Tires. They're just the wheel I drive using for the street. They're 245s on it, all round. There's not very many VLs. I can actually put 245s on their car, front and back. People might be critics and say they're not that good, but I like them. The colours are light gum with a grey. I had no choice for this colour, because my, my brother spray Spray he's my younger brother, but he's a lot bigger than me. And I had no choice but to do this colour. He actually threatened me if I didn't do it. I still got the bruises to prove it. So the car's actually taken me about a year, just probably a year and a month, just to get the thing up to where it is now. I just loved it. I was building that car and I just didn't want to stop. Like, I'd work on it to whatever hours I could get my mate to stay open. I haven't built this car myself, it feels great, like to, especially the feedback I get on it. Um, it's not, I haven't paid anybody to do this build, so anyone asks me questions, I know exactly what gone into it. It makes me very proud, you know, like the time frame I built it in and the way it ended up coming out at the end. So the plans for the car is to um, get it out there on the track um, for Kutamundra, there's a big Kutamundra uh, street battle, so that's, that's the plan, that's why the car was actually built for that and for power crews to keep up with the quicker cars. My brother's got a GDR, all our friends have got GDRs, so all of you've got to watch out. The VLR's coming.